In this lesson, we're going to be talking about penetration goals. So as with any activity or endeavor, it's useful to have goals set. You should have goals so that you can figure out whether you accomplished everything that you wanted to and how well you may have done. So the types of goals that we're looking for when it comes to penetration testing or ethical hacking or those sorts of activities really depends on the needs of your target. If your target is looking for just a check mark, for example, they're audited on a regular basis for compliance or regulatory reasons, and they're really just looking for a check mark on a sheet of paper, and they're not really going to do anything with the results, the goals you would have from that activity are probably going to be very different than the goals you would have from an activity where you've been engaged to be part of a red team and they want to see how deeply you can get into the organization without being spotted by the operational folks. So those are two very different scenarios where you would have two very different sets of goals, which isn't to say you should skimp on the first activity or do just a partial job, but the level of effort that you're going to put into and the types of things that you're going to do between those two sets of engagements is probably going to be a little different. It's important to note that malicious attackers will have specific goals. And our goals are going to be dependent on the needs of your target. If your target doesn't particularly care about one aspect of the type of activity you would normally go through in your methodology, that's part of your methodology, then you would probably drop that because it's not worth your time. That's not what they're paying for because they don't particularly care about that for a variety of reasons. Maybe they already know about it and they're involved in getting it fixed. So they're really interested in seeing you focus your time on some different things. So your target is going to have a set of needs and you should build your scope and your activities around what those needs are. It's just good business practice. So a malicious attacker is going to be looking for things like persistent access and control. So when we're talking about access, we're talking about were you able to break in? In other words, can you get shell access where you can be typing commands? Can you get desktop access in the case of a graphical interface? Can you start launching programs or copying files? Can you get access to a system? How easy was it to get access? Is it something that only a real expert with years and years and years of experience is going to be able to accomplish? Or is it something that a 12-year-old kid sitting in his parents' basement is going to be able to do? Can you repeat the activities that you performed to get the access that you did? Is it something that was just a fluke? Did it only happen once? Or can you continue to repeat it? And importantly, how were you able to get access? All of these are going to be interesting pieces of information for your target or the organization that has engaged you to perform these tasks. They're going to want to know, were you able to break in? In other words, is there something that we need to fix? How easy was it? Can you repeat it? Which goes back to the, do they really need to fix it or not? And finally, how? So they know what it is that they need to fix. In addition to access, sometimes you're just looking for information, and there are different ways of getting information aside from actually being on the system itself. You can gather usernames and passwords. You can gather information about other systems. For example, in the case of a web application, either the web server or the web application server may have a configuration file sitting around somewhere that's got the information about how to log into the database system. Otherwise, the application can't actually get access to the data that's stored in the database. So somewhere that's got to be kept. If you're able to find that, then that's really useful information. So credentials for other systems, really important, really useful to have. Also, credit card numbers or personally identifiable information. Malicious attackers are going to be going after those sorts of things. So your target probably wants to know whether you could find them as well, since that's going to be one of the goals of somebody who's really determined and really going after them. 
So they need to know whether that information is available so they know that they need to do a better job of protecting it. So let's talk about persistent access. We've already talked about access. What's the difference with persistent access? Persistent access has to do with can you get back in? Are you always able to get back into the system when you want to or when you need to? Can you log in anytime you want? Sometimes that isn't about continuing to come in through the same channel that you were able to get in the first time. Sometimes what you need to do is you need to install a back door. You need to set up a tunnel somehow from the system that you've managed to get into to another system so that you can come back in through the tunnel. Maybe you could set up a VPN and be able to get in that way when you need to remotely. So it's not always about being able to get back in the way you got in the first time. Sometimes it's about installing something that allows you to get back in whenever you want. Finally, we're going to talk about control. What does control mean? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean the ability to log in on a regular basis. Sometimes we're not so concerned about that. What we're concerned about is other things like, can I install a piece of software that allows the system to participate in a botnet? So, for example, can I get somebody to come to a website where I've got a piece of software that will exploit a vulnerability in the web browser and get my botnet installed that allows that system to participate in a botnet? That's a certain level of control. Can I use the system as a leaping off point to other systems? Maybe I don't really care so much about it and what it has as much as I care about the fact that I can get into it and bounce off to other more important systems. Can I get access to internal systems as I need? And some of that comes back to the jumping off point. Is the system that I have access to just a dumb system that sits on the edge of the network, but it somehow allows me access to internal systems through it? So I've got some control in that way. Could it be used as a tunnel point to other systems? It's really important to have goals as you come into a particular engagement so you know what it is that you're looking to accomplish. When you formulate your goals, you're going to want to make sure they are in line with the expectations of your target. So you don't have one set of goals and your target has a completely different set of expectations. So when you get to the end, they have no idea what you've done or why you've done it. You want to make sure that you're in line with your target when you formulate your goals and you go forward. 